come in um, and worship God and just maybe spend a little time being still in the presence of the Lord. And it will be um, a real moving experience. If you're not feeling Christmas and the joy that is supposed to be there, um, I would really recommend um, that you just spend a little time five o'clock on the 21st um, in worship. Um, on the on Christmas Eve, we'll be having a four o'clock and 11 o'clock service. Again, that's four and 11 Christmas Eve. And then on the 29th, we're only going to have one service, 10 o'clock. The reason we're only having one service is because I'm preaching and we probably won't need the space for two. So, um, so anyway, that's our schedule and um, we look forward to seeing all of you um, and all the friends and family you'll be inviting in the next um, coming couple of weeks. So I do want to remind you that um, if you are planning on staying after the service today, to help with the um, cookie decorating and present wrapping and all the other things that are, is going to be going on. Um, that will be immediately after the service. They're going to be eating in the um, youth room and there will be pizza um, here at some point, hopefully quickly after the end of the service. And then that will be going on. And you are all invited if you'd like to um, stay and help out with that. That would be much appreciated. Um, Pledge cards, if you have not gotten in a pledge card yet, but you think you, you kind of just forgot, I understand. Trust me. Um, it's not too late. If you'd like to um, turn in a pledge card, you can do so. Um, you can turn one in. If, if you don't have yours anymore, you can get one from the church office and turn it in there. Or um, if you see Judy Carter, you can certainly make sure that she gets it. And um, if, if you've forgotten, that's okay. We, we, we have lots of grace here. So, um, Last announcement. And it's one of the more important ones. Christmas cookies. <laughs> That's it. No. Uh, no, we, we are looking for a few Christmas cookies uh, to have out during and um, before and after our Christmas Eve services. If you'd like to do that, um, please um, bring some in. Um, in the next few days, um, coming weeks, or days, not weeks, um, and put them in the kitchen and just label them Christmas cookies or Christmas Eve and um, Christmas Eve. And I will try to stay out of them um, while I'm, I'm here working. So um, that's more than enough for me today. <laughs> so I am going to turn it over to the band. Let's prepare our hearts to worship. Thanks. All right, friends, would you please stand? Get ourselves warmed up a little bit. Faith and courage let me see you. 
What's in your heart that's causing you to seek the Christ child? Is there anything getting in the way? I think about that when I think about the three kings and that King Herod literally would have killed him, them if he'd gotten their hands on them. Now, I don't think it's that bad for any of us, but, um, you know, as we're seeking that light and following that light, sometimes there's a lot in our hearts that would get in the way and feel like it's that heavy. Um, our next song is a little bit of a, of a lighter way to think about that topic. It's called I've Seen the Light, and it talks about everybody in the story of Christ's birth, uh, seeing the light and having that epiphany, epiphany, you know what I mean, um, where they kind of realize, hey, God's calling me to do this, and, and, and it's going to be okay. So again, uh, wherever God's leading you this Christmas season and during this journey, uh, trust that um, he's leading you and your heart right where it needs to go. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> When Mary, mother of our Lord, heard she hold God's Son, she feared at first and then rejoiced, delighting in such love, singing praise God, I've seen the light, I've seen the light, I've seen the light. Praise God, I've seen the light, and it leads to man but Joseph heard of Mary's news, he wanted them to be. But an angel came to share the truth and comfort in a dream. And he said, praise God, I've seen the light, I've seen the light, I've seen the light. Praise God, I've seen the light, and it leads to Bethlehem. I witnessed a heavenly host And the angels sang of a holy child So to see him they did go Go, go. go. Shouting praise God I've seen the light I've seen the light I've seen the light Praise God I've seen the light And at least so bad wise men out to stop the newborn king but they offered Christ rare gifts instead and heard a new calling declaring praise God I've seen the light I've seen the light I've seen the light praise God I've seen the light and it leads to Bethlehem hey I've seen the light, I've 
I've seen the light, I've seen the light. Praise God, I've seen the light. Singing, praise God, I've seen the light, I've seen the light, I've seen the light. Praise God, I've seen the light. Would you please pray with me? Merciful God, you set your messengers the, messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may celebrate all right the commemoration of the Nativity, and may we await with joy the coming in glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We have two scripture readings this morning. The first is from Ezra 3, verses 10 through 13. When the builders laid the foundations of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments with trumpets and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals, took their place to praise the Lord as prescribed by David of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good. His love towards Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sounds of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard far away. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 32. Now there was a man in Jericho called, excuse me, a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, where the parents brought in a child, the child Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, thanks be to God, right? Let's pray. God, I do pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So you heard it in that Old Testament text that Rick just read, that the people cheered. But what were they cheering for? Steve... Uh, has been doing a Bible study for folks around the text that we've been using in our Advent sermons. And if you look at the last two weeks, they were from prophets. The prophets who were promising that God was going to bring back his people from captivity. A God who promised this servant, suffering servant leader, right? And a king that would come for these people. All these things the prophets had promised. Well, at least in part, what Ezra is is a history book about a God who keeps promises because it's the first 
remnant of the people who were in captivity in Babylon coming back to be in Jerusalem. So it's a history book. It's odd to use in Advent, but it's to remind us that in history we find that what the prophets have said is true. God keeps God's promises. And that's good news, right? But Rick read it and said that many of the people cheered. They gave a loud shout and praised the Lord because the foundation of a temple had been laid. But the old folks who remembered the first temple cried aloud. They cried while the others shouted for joy and says the sound was heard far away and all of them made so much noise that you couldn't tell the difference between shouts of joy and weeping. Everyone praised God in that moment, but there was mixed emotions, right? The young people who had never had a temple, who had lived in captivity in Babylon, were so excited that a foundation had been laid so that they too might have a temple and a place to worship their God, cheered. They shouted. They were excited. But the old people who had lived those years in captivity looked around and realized that many of the people that they had gone to Babylon with were no longer around. And so they returned to a place that felt lonely. And they saw just a foundation where once a great temple had stood. And so they wept because it wasn't what they remembered. It wasn't what they had hoped for. But that is just the truth of this season. Excitement and weeping, mixed emotions, right? It was Christmas night at my parents' house. All the presents had been opened and all the food had been eaten, save maybe a couple of crescent rolls and a piece of che cherry cream cheese pie, but otherwise everything had been consumed. And my four brother-in-laws had gone to their neutral corners. Two were sitting across from each other in the den, not talking to each other, watching a John Wayne movie. One was asleep on the couch, drooling onto his turkey gravy stained shirt <laughs> and the other was pacing behind the christmas tree chewing his fingernails just hoping my dad would not even talk to him because my dad made him so nervous the two of my four sisters were in the kitchen putting up clean dishes talking about the other two's kids and the other two sisters were sitting at an old baldwin piano that we had all learned to play the piano on in the living room and first, I got out the old John Thompson piano book that many of you remember learning to play piano with. And they played songs out of the John Thompson book. Then they got the Broadman hymn, hymnal, which is a Baptist hymnal. They played some hymns out of the Broadman. And then they got an old paperback book full of carols. And they began to play those. And all the kids and grandkids and some great-grandkids gathered around the piano when they played a familiar song that all of them knew and loved and they began to sing and you know this one too so sing it with me dashing through the snow on a one horse open sleigh o'er the fields we go laughing all the way bells on bobtail ring making spirits bright what fun it is to laugh and sing a sleighing song tonight oh jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Wow, you all know that one. Right? Because you're in Ohio, right? There's such things as jingle bells and open sleighs and snow. The things we just sing about in the South, right? But you know that one. And so the whole family knows that one. It's the one the kids all love, and they all sing too loud. But while they're in the living room singing that, my mother had squirreled away in a back room with her crossly turntable. You remember crossly turntables? No? <laughs> You're in church. You want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know who Crossley was? Owned the Cincinnati Reds. Gave us the, right? Gave us the, had, we, had the, we were the owner of the Cincinnati Reds and gave us these turntables, the Crossley turntable that my mother would listen to her 78s on. A record player. 
Wow, yes. A turntable. A record player. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom would listen to 78s. If you know what that is, it's, it's 78 RPM, right? And I bought a bunch of little 45s that you could get for a dollar at, at Nichols Dry Goods, you know, and I had all these little 45s I listened to. And you had a different stem you had to put over the little stem so you could put the 45s on it and listen to it. And then you'd flip and play the B-side, you know, like Michael Jackson and Oreo Speedwagon. Yeah? Okay, okay, just a second. <laughs> and so I played 45s, but this night my mom was, was back in a back room with her 33 and a third RPM record by Bing Crosby. The title of the album was simply Merry Christmas. Some of you own this, right? Or your, your mom's ha had this, right? The, the Bing Crosby Merry Christmas album. And it had jingle bells on it, but that wasn't what my mom was listening to. She kept picking the needle up and replaying the eighth song on that record over and over and over and over and over because she wanted to hear Bing Crosby sing, and you, you know this one too, probably. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams. They were a little bit like those people in Ezra chapter 3. The kids were in the living room singing way too loud, top of their lungs, jingle bells! And my mom was sitting in a back room listening to I'll Be Home for Christmas. And all the kids and grandkids and great-grandkids were excited because they were able to be together at Mama and Papa's house, right? And they got to be there and, and share with the cousins and siblings and have had all this day of Christmas together. And they were excited about what Christmas is while my mother sat in a back room with tears running down her face remembering what Christmas was. That was the year that my mom says that she was so depressed because there was no one left alive who remembered when she was a little girl. There was no one who was still around who remembered when she would go through her stocking and see what Santa had left or open the simple presents that her parents could afford to get her during the Depression. And she was sad. And so she listened to Bing Crosby again and again and again in the midst of all this I was standing out in the front yard of my parents house walking that dad gum dog that my dad didn't want in his house and she was relieving herself in the front yard as I was listening to music coming out of two different sides of our house and then I heard a voice in the dark say Hey, my boy, it's my dad. I said, what are you doing out here? He said, I had to get away from that racket. He said, it was too loud in the house. And he said, and your brother-in-law was making me nervous with his pacing around the Christmas tree. I just had to get out here and get away from it for a minute. He said, you know, out here in the yard, you can't tell the difference between I'll be home for Christmas and Jingle Bells. It's just noise. <laughs> but he said, you know what? It's kind of nice. Stand out here in the cold, in the dark, and just listen. And then I felt his hand on my shoulder as he said, Merry Christmas, son. Merry Christmas, Dad. My family was like those folks in Ezra chapter 3. Some were excited for the day, and for others it brought tears. 
But our church family's like that too. Right? If you had been here on Thursday night, you would have heard children standing on a stage on risers with 500 people gathered in our gym as they were singing happy birthday Jesus at the top of their lungs. It was awesome. We pulled out every chair we own in the place. We had the chairs those metal chairs we went and got the chairs out of the youth room we got the ones out of fellowship hall i had my office chair for my i mean any chair we could put a behind in we had somebody listening to kids singing happy birthday jesus it was great but the thing is next saturday night we'll have blue christmas and some of us will gather there because we'll think of the people who aren't here this year some of you will gather at the funeral home on Thursday and remember Miss Yvonne Walters who won't be here this Christmas and like me you'll mourn that and you'll think of the other church members and friends and family members we've lost over the last year and so here's the thing we come to this season with mixed emotions We'll laugh and we'll have shouts of joy and we'll sing too loud and we'll have a great time together and yet there'll be some of us who cry and are grieving and will be sad. And the same thing will happen on Christmas Eve. There will be people who show up here at Christmas Eve that we haven't seen ever. I mean, literally, they've never been in the walls of this place before, but they'll show up and they'll want to sing all those Christmas carols way too loud and stand in the dark next to strangers with a light and sing Silent Night, right? Because that's what they expect. And there will be other people who haven't been here in a long time and they'll come and they'll grieve the fact that some of the people they expected to see on Christmas Eve aren't here anymore. And they don't know who this guy is with the strange accent who's up front, right? Because they loved that old guy who was here before. And they'll, right? I don't mean it like he's old. I'm just saying the guy was here 23 years, guys. Come on. Hoover, if you're watching, I'm sorry. You were here a long time, okay? You know what I'm getting at, that there will be people who show up and they'll realize that someone they love and care about isn't here. And we'll all sit together in dimly lit sanctuary and sing songs together to celebrate the baby Jesus and the Christ who comes again. But the most important thing is that we'll do it together. We'll laugh together will cry together but being part of the body of christ is first and foremost about being together and to be the body of christ is to shout for joy with those who have things to shout for joy about and to mourn with those who have things to mourn that is being the body of christ and so we will give thanks this advent season for the baby jesus but together in good and bad we'll give thanks that christ will come again i told folks in the first service and i want to make sure i say this to you as well there's a part of me that that is sad that i won't be in louisiana this year that's just being honest right but I love being the pastor of Hope United Methodist Church. I love living in the Anthony Wayne area. And so I say this with real feeling, and I want you to hear me say it. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Amen? We thank you, God, for the blessing of being a people called hope, and we ask that you would let us live lives that give that hope to others. We thank you that together we can be the body of Christ, that we can laugh together, we can mourn together. In all things, we are together. We are your people. So we thank you for sending your son Jesus to live among us, to show us how to live, and we thank you that Christ will come again. It's in his name we pray, believing in him and trusting in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. God with us, go and tell Emmanuel that's come from here. has come from heaven and his name will ever be the prince of peace the wonderful counselor he's a great and mighty lord bow before our holy savior unto us a child is born hope to all
So as we prepare for um, uh, prayer, I want to remind you that this week we will celebrate the life of Yvonne Walters. Uh, there's a visitation at the funeral home Wednesday 2 to 7, if I remember right. And then the funeral will actually be at the funeral home on Thursday at 11, followed by a lunch here at church. Um, some of you remember her. She might have been your librarian at school. Um, some of you remember an old black witch that would stand on the roof of the school during a Halloween parade and who would read a story that said, Boo! Scat! Ratchet Fratch! Right? No? Some of you remember. Um, I give thanks for her because she was one of those people who told me when I first moved here, I'm going to be your friend. And she made a point of, of doing that. And when I went to village council for the first time to pray for them when they started their uh, meeting, she puffed out her chest and told everyone on, on village council that I was her pastor. She claimed me before she ever really sat in the pews and, and worshipped here. But she claimed me, and I give thanks for that and for her life. I uh, also remind you that this week, uh, in fact tomorrow, uh, Janice and Chuck Witte will celebrate their 69th wedding anniversary. 69 years. At, at the 9 o'clock service, I said, Janice has been married to an old man a long time. And then Jenny gave me an edit and said, she's been married to a grumpy old man for a long time. So that's tomorrow, but then later in the week... Um, Tim and Jenny Yoder are celebrating 44 years of marriage, and so we give thanks for that too. And now you know why Tim, every time you meet him and you ask him how he's doing, he says, best day of my life. If you live with that woman, you'd say the same thing. You're a lucky guy. Uh, on my Facebook, this popped up this morning, this was from 2015. Uh, December 15th of 2015, Alice and I were living in Walker, Louisiana, and I posted this on Facebook, hoping it might encourage some of my friends. Uh, it was based on an exchange that I'd had with a high school classmate. One of my dearest friends shared with me that this week he prayed and read his Bible for the first time in three years. He felt led to go to Isaiah 43. So the first words he read after many months of feeling abandoned by the church and all alone were, but now, he went on to read, but now, don't be afraid, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine, when you're in over your head, I'll be there with you, when you're in rough waters, you will not go down, when you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end, because I am God, your God. So never, never, never stop praying for friends who have seemed to, lo to lose their way. Because God can lead them home again. And if this is your first time here ever or in a long time, welcome home. Let's pray. God of life and death, we pray for those who are facing the end of life with fear. May they come to know that your love reaches out to unfold even in death. We pray for those, and we are many, who find it hard to accept ourselves the way we are and instead choose to hide behind the mask of possessions and power. Help us to risk living with a little less of these and to look at ourselves without fear through your eyes of love. We pray for those in our world for whom it always seems winter, who have no hope of the warmth and brightness of a spring just around the corner, those who have no food, no home, no money, no work, no hope. Help us find ways to share what we have with them and to give them hope. God of creation, we pray for your world teetering on the brink of a long, bitter winter brought on by our neglect. Help us to work to restore a balance. Help us to rediscover and observe the rhythms of creation which you wisely put into place so that spring will follow winter and all may enjoy the fruits of your good creation. Lord, we pray for our congregation as we face the challenges of the future and look for your will for us. 
Help us to run the risk of losing things which we hold as precious so that we are more able to reach out to others with your good news. Help us to be wise in deciding what, if anything, to discard and what new vision, if any, we should pursue. Help us trust for the new spring life which can flow out into our community through us because of you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The prophet Isaiah uses word pictures to draw us in and fill us with eager anticipation of what is not yet. Isaiah 35 poetically sings, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. That's the expectation of what happens when the ransomed of the Lord shall return. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. From Isaiah 35, verse 10. Sharing our gifts and tithes and our offerings provide opportunity for us to step into this picture and join the celebration. Come, bring your best gifts. Let the joy of the Lord explode in this place. Will the trustees please come forward and collect our offerings? Praise be to God. 
Please pray with me. God, in whom we rejoice, we pray through these gifts in our lives, you will help the whole creation celebrate the coming one. Use this offering and this congregation to build a highway for all your people, so sorrow and sighing shall flee, and true joy will be made real. Amen. If you would, welcome with me Patty Carpenter and her family as they come to light our third Advent candle, our pink candle today. Got it? Hey, Bubba. Isaiah Reed, and then, of course, Cade Verling. The Advent season, which begins the church's liturgical year, is a time of preparation for our hearts and minds for the anniversary of the Lord's birth on Christmas. This morning, we read from Isaiah 35:10, And those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. The wreath and the candles are full symbolism tied to the Christmas season. The wreath itself, which is made of various evergreens, signifies continuous life. The circle of the wreath, which has no beginning or end, symbolizes the eternity of God, the immortality of the soul, and the everlasting life we find in Christ. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent, and one candle is lit each Sunday. On this third Sunday of Advent, we light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May our May the joyful promise of your presence, O oh God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Sorry, that's my bad. Joyce. Friends, would you please stand as we prepare to lift our voices and sing glory that God's love would come to this world and continue to give our hearts the peace it so desperately needs.
us together now and forever. Emmanuel, we're singing glory, glory. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Singing glory, glory. Let there be peace. Let it start in. hands with your neighbors as we sing our benediction. May 